Hey, what's up, guys? I saw this guy on YouTube. He was talking to uh, Lewis Howell. His name is James R. Doty, Magic Mind. That's a manifesting book. And I was trying to do one of his exercises. And it starts off like uh, try to relax, sit in a, a relaxing position, close your eyes, make sure you breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth so that I could get in tune with the present now. That's another good book too by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. He also has a, a bunch of other books on New Earth and Stillness Speaks. Check them out. They're on YouTube. He also says, uh, relax my muscles, starting at the toes, and imagine I'm relaxing all the way up to the top of my head. I remember a couple of times I was meditating, and this only happened in my car, my Mazda Miata, because I felt super comfortable in that seat, and it felt like my head was stretching. It was, it was floating up top and it was being pulled off of my head, kind of like a, a balloon. I don't know how it feels for you guys to meditate or manifest those kinds of things, but let me know how it feels for you. Let me know what it does for you, what you think about it. He also says... Uh, feel, at, feel at ease, focus on relaxing the body, feel a sense of calmness, safety, don't worry about anything, criticism, judgment, about my dreams, my aspirations, the things that I wanted in life. And it's good to be outcome independent and have faith in faith that if things are supposed to happen, they will happen. And if they don't happen, it is what it is. Also, another good book is The Secret by Rhonda something. And she's she also said, pretend like it already happened. For example, if you're trying to manifest bread, say thank you for this bread. I'm going to give it to other people to try and help them. Those kinds of things. Continue to breathe in and out. Continue to feel comfortable and relaxed. Visualize my life. Gentle, gently call to mind my life as it is in broad strokes. I was thinking that I'm proud, I'm happy, I'm blessed, I'm lucky based on the answers that I gave. And in terms of my life or relationships, a relationship could be me developing myself to learn how to talk to myself. Another time I was, I went to Toastmasters to try and learn how to public speak. And I realized why am I trying to speak like other people when I should be genuine and speak the way I want to speak from my heart. I was also trying to eliminate the pause words, for example, uh, so those kinds of words, double words, trying to clean up my speech. And I realized that I was trying to learn how to speak to myself because people have 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day. That's why it's super important for me to learn how to communicate with myself, make sure it's in the present. I'm using I, me, myself, and the now so that I'm trying to program myself and visualize and manifest what I want to do for myself versus if I said, you guys should read, that it has nothing to do with me what you guys are gonna do. I, I will be giving myself instructions that I'm going to read this book, I'm going to try a six week exercise program, the mental exercises, and I'll see how it goes. I don't have any expectations. I also noticed that a lot of books, for example, Napoleon Hill, I like him a lot. He's probably my, my favorite author because I think he's genuine and he's honest. And the things that he spoke about in his books, 
a lot of these books, they tie in together and they share a lot of principles in terms of uh, feeling worthy, manifesting. And I think in the past, I didn't necessarily feel worthy because I didn't grow up with my mother. She bounced when I was six months old and I just didn't have love for myself and I couldn't figure it out until I met her when I was 39. And I asked her, how did you grow up? What was the relationship like with your parents? And it was distant. That's why she never came back. She was afraid of my dad because he was old school Asian guy. So I needed, I learned that I had to love myself and invest in myself that she couldn't love me. That self-love, it doesn't come from your parents. It doesn't come from your friend or a woman. That wow, when I lost my position, my relationship, my mom, she pretty much said, that's too painful and I don't want to see you anymore. And I don't think that I owe you anything in this lifetime. And it is what it is. It's not the personal because everybody is going through their own struggles. And I had to learn because... I also bought that book, the Shadow Work Journal book, and I learned to have kindness, compassion, and understanding because I'm 41 and I'm not perfect. There's tons of things that I need to improve on. <laughs> and I'm aware and I'm admitting it that I needed to be in more, more in tune with my emotions because in my opinion, they don't teach emotional intelligence in school. And it's important because they're half of the population. So I thought that oh, how I thought was the right way or I was thinking is it men versus women or this color versus that color. The battle is with yourself. And I was also reading another book that Outwitting the Devil book. And he was saying that when you watch a cartoon, you'll see an angel on one side and you'll see a devilish cartoon on the other side. And if you were to think that the light and the dark, if you're a child of God, that he is inside of you, or if you believe in the universe, the universe is inside of you. And the chances of you being born are astronomical. That you probably win the lottery a hundred million times before you you were to be born. And you're, you were born your value was created when you were born. That's what I learned in another book called The New Psychology of Winning by Dennis Whaley. I thought that I was dumb when I was a kid. My dad said, you're stupid. I didn't read a lot and I didn't speak a lot because I had a lot of pain from the past and I was programming myself to fail and not to be smart. And I thought that I didn't like to read. I thought that I didn't like to write until I found these kinds of books that I resonated with, that I was writing things that I want, was passionate about. So if you say you don't like to read, it might not be the case. It might be a false belief because I'm pretty sure if I gave you a, a magazine, a book, I told you to do something that you wanted to do with somebody that you wanted to do it with, you would feel it. And it's important for me to get in tune with my feelings because in the past, I suppressed a lot of the pain that I had from the past. And it's like a fist, right? If you have a closed fist, nothing comes in, nothing goes out. I, if I block my emotions, I block the good ones and I block the bad ones. And I try to run away and the demons follow you throughout time. And I'm glad that I'm aware now and I'm more open. I'm willing to learn and to change. I was also reading in that Think and Grow Rich book by Napoleon Hill. He said most men don't start to create until they're 40 years old because uh, maybe they might be wasting their time, attention, and resources on other rated R things. Read the book and you'll understand what I'm talking about. 
So visualize my life, um, gently recall to mind my life and its broad strokes. Primary relationship is with myself because how I feel about myself, I will treat other people in that way. And I hear the greatest gift that I could give to the world is my happiness because if I'm happy, I would treat other people ha happily. I would try and help them. Whatever I want in life, I have to give to get. What do I do for work? I would say in terms of my personal work, I'm working on self-development. I'm more working on my mind and not necessarily um, other things like the gym. In terms of professional work, I work in software quality assurance. I was blessed to be able to work in that field because a lot of the companies that I work for, they have great missions. One company, for example, they did food analytics where they traced the food, the health of the food so that consumers could see where the food came from, if there were any defects, the quality and freshness of the food. Another company I worked for was an online therapy company. They also got bought out by a telehealth company. Um, I worked for a nursing home. I, ner I was a nurse aide in the past. I was a residential counselor. I did LVN for a little. I got a chance to work at the VA in Livermore. I started working when I was 13 and environment matters a lot because it, influence, it influences me how I live, how I feel. And when I was a kid, I never felt at home because it wasn't my home. And I felt like an outsider. I didn't speak my Asian language. I didn't look like the other kids. I got bullied. I didn't like myself. I didn't love myself. And I'm pretty sure I attracted fights. I did experience some racism. It is what it is, right? That Fighting, it just felt normal because I, I had to fight every, every year. Location, I'm originally from upstate New York and I went to school in Albany. I moved to the Bay Area in 2009. And the Bay Area is pretty cool. It's expensive though. <laughs> Emotions, I would feel high and low. I think that I learned to be a harsh critic from, cause when you're a kid, from day one to about seven, you learn a lot from what you're experiencing. And, and in my opinion, even before that, when I was being created inside of my mother, that I'm pretty sure I could hear things, I could feel her. And I, I love her even though I didn't spend a lot of time with her. And I said, I, I loved you when I was with you and I loved you when you left. And that won't change. I think for the most part my life, if I, if I were to talk about it, I normally don't talk about my past because it reminds me of the negatives. Even though there were positives in it, that's why it's perspective. That's how you see your life. That's how you could speak about your life. So I, I would feel the highs and the lows. I would feel joy and anger. And if I were to be objective about my life, it's pretty good. These are the reasons as to why my life is great. Because I have health, I have relationships with myself and others, knowledge, opportunity, awareness, resources, time, energy, attention, access, technology, freedom, ability, intelligence, kindness, understanding, compassion, experience, expression, articul I'm articulate, bold, outgoing, passionate, and efficient. And why is reading important? That's because 
it's important from a visual aspect that I have to read and I have to picture it in my head and that's pretty much what we're doing to create our lives versus if I'm just watching something on Netflix it's someone else's idea it's kind of putting me to sleep and it depends on if it's valuable information something that I could learn I like Brandon Carter his YouTube videos are they're awesome because he teaches man how to be on point with a lot of things for example he says um, count your macros weigh your food set Google calendar events Lock out your time in half an hour chunks so that you're actually aware and you're responsible, accountable for the things that you're doing in your life. Also for reading back in 1700s and 1800s, it was illegal for people like me to read because it's powerful. That if you, if you can read, if you have education, and you can understand how things work, then you could get out of the psychological traps because um, just say, for example, for for racism, right? It, it does occur, but 99% of the time for me, it doesn't happen that I'm aware of it. And it could be psychological in a sense that if two fighters are going to fight and then one person says, you ain't got no arms or you ain't got no six pack, you know, you, you're not in shape or you're a blue belt or something like that, you know. That person can be planting a seed of doubt. Psychologically, it could put that person in a confined box. I'm not saying it's always going to work, but <laughs> for Conor McGregor, it worked. For a lot of his opponents until he met Khabib. Because Khabib, he knew what time it was. That's another um, life hack, I think, that uh, martial arts is awesome because it builds strength, it builds confidence, it teaches you to fail and fall so that I could learn how to be successful and win. And obviously, I won't win every fight, and that's all good. You don't have to win every single battle. So allow each emotion to run their own course naturally, whether it's joy, contentment, sadness, frustration, boredom, or anger, and be with the emotions and details of my life. So visualize a bit more fully. Continue to move through images of my life. I might reflect on these questions. Who are the people who are important to me? Who matters? I think I matter for the most part. And I know that sounds kind of conceited and selfish, but if you could think that you're the most important person, and if you were on an airplane and those face masks drop down, you put your face mask on first and then you help other people. I would have to make sure that I'm in the strongest, best position so that I can help other people, to serve other people, because that's what life is really about. And that's one of the main reasons why I went into healthcare, because I knew, I knew what it was like to need help and to be on the bottom. And that's another reason as to why I like software, because it's a different way of how to come up with solutions to help a lot of people so who matters an environmental friend is a friend that is only in a friend with you in that environment and when that environment goes away whether it's school location work then you may or may not see them and I would have to understand some people last for one minute, some people last for, you know, a week, some people last for years. It just depends on the situation on uh, to be blessed and, and happy and to appreciate other people because we are really connected.
I have to do things independently, but you know, I, I work with a lot of different people. And technically the whole world is connected. Even if you think of the United States and China, they're married because they do business together. I mean, I, I personally don't see like us versus them. It's like, it is what it is, right? Everybody has their objectives in life. And also, if some people say, if there is a universe or a God, why is there positive and negative? And I was reading the Outwitting the Devil book and he said, for a battery, you need positive and you need negative. And I was thinking, like, why is there war? When I was a kid, I was thinking, oh, it's 2024, why is there war? Why don't you just have, talk to Dana White and settle in an octagon? Both of those leaders should go fight in the octagon. And then you wouldn't have to involve any soldiers. You wouldn't have to involve, but I hear it's kind of delusional, right? For me to think like that, because everybody has freedom to act on their own will. And I could be blessed because the United States, in my opinion, it's pretty safe. I mean, I, I did get into a lot of fights, but nobody ever tried to kill me. The, <laughs> that I could say, you know, where with like a knife or a gun or something like that, I, I never got drafted. And I just figured if, if I got to go, I got to go. I was also watching a movie, it's called The Convert. And yeah, these two tribes, I think that took place in New Zealand, 1800s. And these two tribes, they had to fight. Um, that's how it was. People back in the days, 1800s, maybe they lived up to 40, 35 to 40. And in the 1950s to 60s, they lived up to, you know, 60, 65. People in today's time, they could live 80s to 100. And we could be blessed in a sense that uh, we, we could live more lives. We have more time, technically. Tomorrow's not promised to anybody. And no matter what happens, uh, I would be accepting of it because I borrow everything that I have in life. My body, my vehicle, my heart, my mind, all of these things. When I worked in a nursing home, I took care of this one person, no arms, no legs. And other people, they didn't have their, their minds. That's why I could be humbled. I could feel blessed that I have, you know, youth, health, opportunities, those kinds of things. Oh, always try and be positive and see your blessings because there's a quote one of the Stoics said if you didn't have your blessings that you would be craving them for example <laughs> if I bent down on this table and I hit my tailbone and I would have pain you know these kinds of things that when, when you're sick you just want health Does it, well, what is your work? Does it provide you with what you need to live? Yes. When I was a kid, I worried a lot. And it doesn't do anything. On, in all honesty, things just work out. Even if I see the bad points in my life, uh, they line up like a connect the dot. Because... There's reasons and lessons as to why these things happened, and I would be accountable for them. My dad always said, if you have a problem in life, go look in the mirror and talk to that person, because it's me. It, it's what I'm creating, and I would have to be accountable for a lot of the things that I do that happen in my life, things that I attract. Because I can't change anyone else, but I can try and change myself. And that's one of the few constants is change, taxes, and delete. If you have others who depend on you, 
I never had any kids because I never wanted to risk what happened to me as a child. And I don't think it's advantageous for me to get married. I don't see the point of it. Or to have kids, it would be a liability for me because I felt broken from the past and I'm still trying to piece myself together to try and change. Maybe later on in life, whatever happens, happens and it's all good, you know, wherever life takes me. I don't want to have any regrets when I take my last breath. Does how you spend your day feel meaningful and fulfilling to you? I think most days are pretty meaningful and fulfilling because I would get an opportunity to participate in life, to try and create, to watch the movie, essentially. What about the location in which your life takes place? The Bay Area, it's pretty cool because there's a lot of things to do in the area. I think it's diverse. It's more, there's more money here. That's why it's expensive. The taxes in San Mateo, it's like 9.5. It's pretty much like 10%. And if you think about uh, $1 that you make, just say, for example, if I got taxed a third, that's what, 66 cents that I were to get back. Just say 67 cents out of uh, every dollar that I make. And then I have to pay 10% tax on that. So do, do the math. Uh, I would have to make almost $2 to be able to buy something that's a $1. It's not the exact math, but you know what I'm talking about. How, how does it feel for you to be in these places? I can have a sense of solitude in the sense that I could find places that I, I could feel at home. And it could also be if I'm trying to drive in rush hour, I, that's why I try to go to work early and I leave early so that I'm not stuck in the traffic because one hour commute could turn into two hours. <laughs> and I met certain people where they drive two to three hours one way to go to work and I just couldn't imagine it doing that. Visualize yourself within your life and know whatever these images evoke. Visualize yourself within your life. So who am I? Who do I want to be? What's my identity? I was reading that book, this Akar Tolle book, A New Earth, and also for the power of now. And he was saying that a lot of identifications, they may or may not be true. That, uh, what's the point of me identifying as an Asian American, right? It's like, I'm American at the end of the day, I was born here, regardless what anyone thinks. And when I stripped away my career, my finances started to go down, my relationship went away, that I had a lot of pain and I turned it into fuel to try and learn, to try and change. And I'm still trying to learn how to be in a present moment because I don't live in the past and <laughs> I don't live in the future. There's something that I heard on a Mission Impossible movie and the person said it was a riddle. What's fast approaching and never arrives and it's tomorrow because we're always in the present moment. And another, another joke was what tea is hard to drink. And the girl in that Crow movie, she said reality. And I thought that that was interesting too because the truth, it can, it can burn. And it could be something that you don't necessarily want to hear. It could be something that I could be in denial. For example, when I was in college, 
I had just crossed and I was eating a lot. I wasn't exercising. I went from like a buck 60 to 185, 25 pounds, man. On me, I'm only five, six and a half. So I was looking pretty bad. And then one brother, he said, look at your stomach. And then I said, oh, I just hate it. And he was like, nah. And then I was like, yeah, it's true, you know, because he had the intention of helping me. He wasn't trying to insult me because he saw me in my prime. So these are examples as to my my life. The things that I could identify with is maybe, for example, a resourceful person or somebody who takes pride in their fitness, even though Eckhart told me saying, when my my fitness fades that it'll be distress and he's right you know because i don't i don't have a good six pack right now compared to when i was like 15 pounds lighter i could get back there i would just have to dedicate my time to getting back there i was also thinking you know how when certain people say you're 40 years old, you're old. It's bad programming because I'm 41 years old and I'm pretty sure I can still hang with the younger guys. Obviously, from a sports perspective and competition, probably not. That's why they got weight classes. That's why they have age brackets. But in, in terms of like rolling or, or sparring, those kinds of things, I'll feel comfortable. So visualize yourself within your life and uh, know whatever images it evokes. Uh, watch your life in your mind's eye. Try imagining every detail, slowly breathing in and slowly breathing out. I'm visualizing my life. I'm free. I have, I had to learn how to invest in myself because if I didn't love myself, then I wouldn't feel worthy of myself and just say, for example, this, it's a Wupan, it's a tracker. The, some people would say, it's $200, why do I need it? And I said, I bought it to track my sleep, to try and improve my sleep, because we sleep a third of our lives on sleep. It affects a lot of different things in life. It affects the quality of my mood the next day. It would affect the lifespan of my life. And the strategies that I'm trying to employ right now are different from when I was 21 because when I was younger, I felt that I had a lot of runway and that's not necessarily true. And it's better to, to be on the grind when I'm younger because then I wouldn't have to play catch up right now. So I'm trying to catch up in terms of my finances, in terms of investing, those kinds of things. I'm pretty sure it'll work out <laughs> however it works out. So right now I try to pay my bills in advance, whether it's rent or my cell phone bill or my car. I'm trying to get rid of the, the car note within this year or early next year. Also another thing for if you have to take your car in and you try to pay cash and then you you could try to negotiate the price down and you could say if i give you cash can i have a discount or same thing with if you're buying car parts or, or those kinds of things or if, if you're renting i asked can i pay you x amount of dollars for six months in advance and then most of the time they say yes not everybody's gonna say yes Make sure you shoot your shots because in sales, just say, for example, if you're dating, it's 3 to 5%. So go get your 3 to 5%. Uh, 3 to 5 out of 100. So that, that's normally how the math works out. All right, now that you can see every detail, slowly open your eyes and continue breathing in and breathing out. I'm relaxed and calm. That secret book, it talks about manifestation and in, in terms of 
oh, thank you for all of this money that I already have. <laughs> or I'm, I'm writing myself checks to try and manifest these kinds of things. Does it work? I don't know. But that Think and Grow Rich book, the main reason why I like it is because he interviewed 500 of the richest Americans in history. And he gathered up all of their information within a 25-year span. And he knew, he knew a lot of people like Thomas Edison, Carnegie. That's who got him to write that book, Dale Carnegie. Record your observations, take out a pen and paper and write for at least five minutes. I'll do that after this video. Maybe I'll speak upon what I wrote for those five minutes. Write as many details as possible, whether it's a few sentences or a paragraph. It only matters that you're writing your life as it is for you and how you feel about it. Now I'll simply sit with my eyes closed, um, three to five breaths. So what, what would I write for five minutes if I was writing something about my life? I would say I could read. I have opportunities to buy these kinds of books because there are certain countries that you wouldn't be able to get certain content or to, to go somewhere freely to do what you want. And obviously in the United States, for example, I was looking up minimum wage in Vietnam. It's like $200 a month, maybe less than that. In the United States, I think it was 1500 And in California, they raised the minimum wage to 20 bucks. Everything is pretty good. I have no real complaints, honestly. And I, I have health, I have ability. I have confidence in the sense that there's boom and bust cycles. And when the chips are down, I'll come back because I did come back before in the past. What are my goals for this year? I'm trying to work on content to try and learn psychology of how to learn about myself so that I could help other people. That's one thing that I'm trying to manifest. I'm trying to manifest freedom. I'm trying to manifest more skills that, so that I could be more efficient with my time. So review your writing first, silently read what you wrote, then read what you wrote out loud. I'll have to do this after the recording. Reflect on your life, take a few moments to reflect on your own choices, living, where have you made conscious decisions? Conscious decision is to buy books. Look into self-development books that you like. Find the authors that you like. Find the authors that solve your problems because if I'm watching YouTube videos or if I'm watching things on Netflix, I'm giving away my attention, my time, my energy and somebody's making money off of that. Because if I'm not paying, I'm the product essentially, right? And pay yourself first. That's why I'm telling you guys, look into these kinds of books. There's tons of books on YouTube, they're free. And a lot of the times if I like the books, the audio books, I bought them. And I also bought them on Audible. So that I could listen to them when I'm driving, when I'm walking, I could read and listen. I, I got a desk, a desk treadmill so that I can have this stack. That's another good book. James Clear Atomic Habits. Another thing about those YouTube videos is you could download the clips, the audio, or you could download the video so that there's no ads in it. Value your time. Because it's one of the most important things that you have. 
But then again, this guy is saying that uh, clock time, use clock time for when you need it. For example, I have to be at work at 7 o'clock. I am at work at 7 o'clock. Versus when I'm sleeping, I shouldn't be thinking about time. I should just be in the present moment and try to knock out. It's one of the hardest things for me is to try and get good sleep. I've been taking some per trazodone. I took a uh, 100 mg at 8 o'clock. I woke up at midnight, bathroom, couldn't go back to sleep. I took 100 more and it did nothing for me. Maybe I'd have to take like four of them, you know, 200 mg. The side effect would be I'd be drowsy waking up. And I don't necessarily want to be drowsy when I'm driving or sleepy when I'm driving. So take a few moments, reflect on the choices. Uh, where, where have you made conscious decisions? Where have you allowed others to choose for you? If I don't choose what I want, then other people will choose for me. That I will just be going with the flow. And it's important for me to shoot for the things that I want and to feel worthy to try and go for them because no matter what, you'll fail in life. You're going to suffer, and everybody suffers. And if you can think of the, the religious people, like Jesus or Buddha, Gandhi, those people suffered a lot. And yes, you're special, but you're not that special. That you're significant and you're insignificant at the same time. That it's normal to suffer, it's normal to fail. And hopefully when you have a lot of pain, you could change. That you would have the opportunity to grow. If you have deleting thoughts, just understand that other people, they could feel the same way as you. And you, you got one life. Well, whatever you want, uh, you, you could get it, you know, well, with, within reason. Uh, if, if you want it to stop, you could stop. But if, if you want to keep on going, uh, I, I think things will turn out good for you. If you put in the work, put in the effort. Because like that YouTuber said, put yourself in a situation where victory is inevitable. That you will be successful eventually. And well, whatever happens, happens. Give yourself credit for your small wins. If your life is not how you expected it or imagined it would be, what was your role and how it actually turned out. I never felt worthy of myself. I was insecure. I didn't feel love for myself and I felt dumb. I felt limited. And there's another good book. It's called Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. It's pretty important because it teaches you the psychology behind why you're feeling this way it teaches you how to get out of these things. And there's also practices that you have to do. So study, practice, study, practice. You can't just read these books. You have to put into action of what you're learning every day. Try it out. Because you would get sick, so sick of your life that you're going to want to change. And that's what happened to me. These kinds of books... They're 20 bucks, right? Versus the books that I bought in college where they charged me like two, three hundred, five hundred dollars $500. Those college books were useless to me because I didn't care about them. I was just trying to get a piece of toilet paper. These books are a fraction of the price. And I'm pretty sure you could go to the library or there are certain books that you could get online for free. You could get this in PDF form for free. And this is one of the most valuable books in history, in my opinion. Uh, right now, I say that uh, these kinds of books, because they're straightforward, you could read them and understand them. And it is possible that your subconscious mind could be blocking you because it, it wants you to... To be consistent with your current programming. It doesn't may or may not want to change. But these kinds of books. 
I think they're more important than religious books, in my opinion. Because uh, you don't necessarily need somebody else to interpret it for you. Because people back in the days, they didn't know how to read. And they would have to go to people to learn how to read or to have somebody write a letter. I was watching that book, Horizon, the American Saga, Kevin Costner. He had to go to a clerk. And he had to trust that clerk to write him a letter. Um, just think that uh, we take reading and writing for granted in today's society because pretty much everybody could do it. I was always a level behind when I was in school and my reading and writing, they weren't on par because I wasn't practicing it. I told myself I don't like to read, I don't like to write. I told myself I was dumb. So it's bad programming. The, if you had bugs on your phone, you would want to update it with fresh software, software that works. So update your software, change, change. Try and, try and be the change that you want to see in your life. So there is no need to be afraid, condemn yourself for any part of your life today. Things happen for a reason. I used to think that a lot of other kids, they grew up with better lives than me, but then I was watching how crime works on YouTube. <laughs> and you can see the, the kids where they're joining gangs and they're shooting and all that. And I could have been one of those kids if, if I grew up in those areas. Or if I was associating with those kinds of people, because if you don't have structure at home, you know, you, you're going to try and find it somewhere else. And that's why I didn't necessarily like being at home and I like working. I started working when I was 13 because my dad worked in a Chinese restaurant and, and I was like, there's no food in the fridge. Let me go to the restaurant and I'll work. I'll work for food. You know, that that's how I ate. I like Asian food, by the way. Simply find, um, this is simply a fact-finding practice. I may not like, it may not feel like it, but you are taking the first steps to reclaim your own inner power and reshaping your life. The main point of it is, is for me to visualize my life how it is, to be objective, to analyze it, so that I could see the areas of what I want to change and to take the steps on how to change it. Artificial intelligence is going to change a lot of things in my opinion because it could do so much. And if those dock workers, they said, oh, we want to negotiate and we want to guarantee the AI or robotics isn't going to take over my job, that's a scarcity mindset because it could take over my job right now easily. I'm pretty sure it's already in the works. It's being done already. And I would have to learn on how to stay relevant. I would have to educate myself to pivot, to be more resourceful, to be more proactive in my future because I'm responsible for it. Appreciate your practice, feel the empowerment and agency that comes with examining my life truthfully. My life is already starting to transform. And you know that you love yourself based on the habits that you take. If you're trying to change, for example, your fitness, your sleep, you're investing in little things like a $20 book or a tracker that these are, this is evidence that shows that I'm trying to change or like skincare routine or if you're in a dating scene, you know, you're trying to learn how to communicate, you know, skincare, make sure you fix your teeth. It affects your smile, it affects your confidence. Figure out a way, because I remember when I was a kid, I said braces are for rich people I was working when I was 13. I could have afforded them and I didn't get them because I didn't love myself. I didn't care about it. 
I was in survival mode. But I fixed them later on in life. Because why not, you know? YOLO. One life. One love. You would have to love yourself because nobody can give you that love. And... That's how life is. You, you would have to take care of yourself and you would have to understand you're the strongest, most powerful person in your universe. And it doesn't matter who it is that is in your life. It doesn't matter if it's your friend, your blood, your mother, your father, your brother. If they're not swimming in your direction, cut those anchors. Cut them loose because throughout society, People said families everything. I would disagree because I think they're not everything. That it sounds conceited and selfish, and life is like a balance. That you want to be balanced so that I would have to be selfish and take care of myself so that I could take care of other people. There were times where I didn't want to change in my life, I wasn't ready. Because I remember my supervisor, he was saying, read this book and do the practices. 2013. I read it, but I didn't do the practices. And I just wasn't ready for the book. I didn't resonate with it. It's like music. I was listening to dark music while I worked out in the gym versus I could have been listening to these books. It didn't work out for me that way. And I, I understand now that I, I have a lot to learn. There's a lot that I don't know. I was asked by my brother, what if you were wrong about a lot of things in life? And yeah, I admit it, I was wrong about a lot of things. And if you're aware, if you're accountable, if you could admit these kinds of things, that you could change. It's, it's good for you to admit it. Because if I'm trying to hide I'm trying to put up a facade that takes energy. I need this energy to focus on these kinds of things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if you guys need help with other kinds of things. Uh, comment down below what you think about books or maybe you could give me recommendations or teach me about certain things. And you get what you give in life. And it took me a while to, to get it. And eventually you guys may, may get it. Maybe you might not get it. 